Let's talk about the sun. The sun, excellent. All right, the sun is, the sun is a star. We first need to know that. It's just like any other star in the sky. The only difference between the sun and the other stars is that we happen to be really close to the sun. If you were to fly far away from our sun, it would look like any other star in the sky. If you flew right up close to any other star in the sky, it would look similar to our sun. So we want to study our sun carefully. It's 99.8% or more of our solar system totally dominates our solar system. It's the source of the light and heat that allows life exist here on Earth, so it uh, certainly has an effect on us personally. So we want to start to measure the sun. So how do we do that? How do we start measuring the basics of the Sun. Well, okay, I can measure, I can say, what is the sun's mass? In order to measure the mass of the sun, I need to find an object orbiting around it and use Newton's version of Kepler's third law. And so if I take the Earth, for instance, or Mercury or Venus, any object orbiting the sun, the Earth is 93 million miles from the sun, it takes a year to orbit around there, math, 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 and I can find out the mass of the sun. And I find that the mass the sun is very massive. It is several hundred thousand times more massive than the Earth. Hundreds of thousands, hundreds of thousands of Earth masses. So that tells us a little bit about it. What else do I want to do? I want to ask about the sun's temperature. Temperature. Oh, uh, we know how to measure temperature. When, uh, when I measure the temperature of the sun, I can use Wien's law. The sun produces this nice thermal black body spectrum, this smooth curve sort of thing, and the peak is right on the border between the green, yellow sort of that, and then I can use the Wien's law equation to calculate based on the brightest wavelength coming out of the sun, that the sun has a temperature of just about 5,800 degrees Kelvin. If you convert that over to Fahrenheit, it's somewhere around 10,000 Fahrenheit. And so, and that's the surface of the sun. The sun has many different temperatures depending on how far in or out you go. But that's the, the photosphere, the visible surface of the sun where most of the light comes from. And that's a temperature of 5,800 Kelvin. What else could I, I could ask what the sun's made of. Chemical, chemical composition. Okay, how do I do that? Well, okay, we've got this, I told you the sun gives off this thermal black body spectrum, but it's not a perfect thermal black body spectrum. It has all these dips and gaps in it. If you take uh, the rainbow of light from the sun and then you spread it out really, really carefully, you know, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and violet, you'll find all these little the thousands and thousands of tiny little narrow dark lines in there. These are absorption lines. They're produced by cooler gas surrounding the photosphere of the sun. And so then they remove, uh, this is transparent gas. So this removes, each chemical element element removes light at a certain pattern of colors. And so I can look at this pattern of colors and say, ah, oh, this is nitrogen, and this pattern of colors and say, this is iron, and this is oxygen. So we can find that basically all the elements are present in the sun. They're all there. But when you do all the mathematical details and work out exactly how much of what, you find that the sun is basically 70% hydrogen, the simplest possible element, one proton orbited by one electron, and about 28% helium, the second simplest element, now you've got your, your, your nucleus with two protons orbited by two electrons, and then the rest, that, that other 2% to make the 100% is all the other elements in the periodic table. There's iron, there's nitrogen, there's oxygen, there's carbon, there's silicon, there's magnesium, everything you can imagine is in the sun there, but it's dominated by hydrogen and helium, and shoot, that's true of basically every star in the sky. So there's some very basics about the sun, and then what else do I want to ask about the sun? I say... Why does the sun shine? And that, that gets us, now, now we gotta start to work. So these are the most basic things about the sun. So we need to look a little bit about the sun's structure in order to begin to answer this question. And the sun is a big ball, only I can't draw a very good circle. Um, so the layer we see, the layer that gives off most of the light from the sun is called the photosphere. Photosphere from the Greek meaning sphere of light. That's where the, the vast majority of the light we see comes from. Above that is uh, the, above that, okay, so is, is the layer that makes these absorption lines. So that, uh, that's where we call the chromosphere. 
So this is a little bit cooler than the photosphere. This photosphere is a temperature of 5,800 Kelvin. That's, that's what we observe there. That's what's given most of our light. Then we have the chromosphere around it, which is a little bit cooler. And then uh, as we go outward, the sun gets less and less dense. And then surrounding the photosphere and the chromosphere is a very, very irregular sort of uh, region called the corona. Corona. And interestingly, the corona hops up and is really hot again. It's very irregular, very low density sort of thing like this, but it's very hot. So that's millions of Kelvins. Millions of Kelvins. Or at least there are significant portions of it are very hot. If you ever see a picture of like a solar eclipse where the moon passes in front of the sun and so the sun's all blocked up, but then you can see all this stuff streaming out away from it, that's the corona. That's what we're seeing. So, this is all what we can see directly. When we're looking at the sun, I can see light from the corona. This hot light gives off x-rays and stuff like that, so NASA satellites can pick that up. The chromosphere, that's what produces these dark absorption lines in the sun, so I can see that. I can see down to the photosphere, and that's all I can see. But in order to, uh, in order to answer, well, I guess a couple of things here. First of all, the question is, why does the sun shine? We'll get there. In order to answer why the sun shines, first of all, the, the, the photosphere shines because it's hot. Any object 5,800 kelvins hot is going to give off light. So there's a very simple answer to why does the sun shine. The sun shines because it's hot. It shines for the same reason the light bulb filament shines, because it's hot. If you take an opaque object and you heat it up, then by Wien's law, all this sort of thing, thermal black body spectrum, it's going to give off light. That's, that's one of the rules of our universe. So there's a basic answer for that. But a deeper answer is, well, okay, it shines because it's hot, but where does that heat energy come from? The, the, the sun is pouring out huge amounts of energy out into space. All this light and heat energy that's pouring out into space, this thermal black body spectrum, gives off an enormous amount of energy. So where does that come from? And it comes from deeper within the sun. Common misconception, sometimes people think the sun is on fire. The sun is definitely not on fire. Fire is a chemical phenomenon. Chemistry happens when you take different types of atoms and you stick them together in different ways. In order to make fire, you've got to have a substance called carbon, which we find in wood and coal and things like that, or natural gas. And then the carbon uh, attaches itself to oxygen. Carbon reacts with oxygen and makes carbon dioxide. So it, that once the, the carbons and the oxygen stick together, then that's fire. And okay, so that's a chemical reaction, gives off heat and light. The sun is not doing chemical reactions like that. It's not sticking different types of atoms together. It's, a, it's another process, it's doing nuclear reactions. We'll talk about that in a second. So that's, that's what's going on. The photosphere, the surface of the sun, I mean, it's hot gas, and fire is hot gas, but fire is hot gas because it's doing chemistry. There's, that sort of thing isn't happening on the sun. So the sun is definitely not on fire. Now, if I want to look deeper into the sun, I want to go down and see what's going on there. Well, there's a certain amount of effect, you know, things down at the photosphere can tell us from, from things below, just watching things going on here. But if I really want to go deeper, I have to do exactly the same sort of thing I do when I look deeper into the earth. To find the layers of the earth, the core, the mantle, and the crust, we use seismology, earthquakes, sound waves bouncing around through the earth in different ways tell us about the layers down there. And the deepest hole we've ever drilled in the earth never even makes it all the way through the crust. So, you know, that's how we learn about the interior of the earth. And we do the same thing with the sun. The sun is a big fluid. It's no solid material in there. It's so hot that all the material is, 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 is like a gas. It's plasma sort of thing. And so there are, there are sound waves that bounce around in the sun. And then by studying those, we can learn about the solar interior, much like we learn about the interior of the earth. So we find out that the outer 30% of the sun is a region called the convection zone. Convection zone, but it's about outer 30% by radius, so I've exaggerated a little bit in this drawing, and that's where convection's taking place. So in this case, convection means hot gas is rising, cooler gas is sinking. It's, it's kind of like a boiling sort of action, but with boiling, the, 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 the liquid actually turns into a gas. Here, it, it's all gaseous sort of stuff, but it's just that the hotter stuff is rising, cooler stuff is sinking, so this is carrying energy out away from the center of the sun. So there's the convection zone. If I go within the convection zone, it's, there's a reason we call the radiation zone. zone. And this is where the gas is pretty much fixed. I mean, the sun spins. The sun rotates about once a month, but it's not, you know, a single moving up and down. So this outer layer of the sun is very turbulent. It's moving. It's constantly dancing around, churning and frothing and all this sort of stuff. You get down to the radiation zone, and now it's pretty stable. It's locked in place. It's, it's rotating, but it's locked in place. And so energy is just slowly percolating out through the radiation zone. You know, particles of light energy are bouncing around, gradually working their way out. It takes a long time for light energy to make its way out through the radiation zone. It takes on the order of 100,000 
thousand or a million years just because the sun is big. The sun is fantastically big. So energy is generated deep inside the sun and then gradually percolates its way through the radiation zone, reaches the convection zone where this rising hot gas carries it up to the photosphere, heats up the photosphere. And now the photosphere is the point where density drops low enough that now it becomes transparent. And then the, now it can escape freely as light energy and travel eight minutes through us to get to the, to, to the earth. And the, the source of energy takes place in the core. The, the, we define the core, that's the place where the energy is generated, and that's where nuclear fusion is taking place. Nuclear fusion. So that's the source. So if I want a real answer for, okay, why does the sun shine? Well, it's hot. Okay, there's one answer. Here's a better answer. The sun shines because it's doing nuclear fusion in its core. That's the source of the sun's energy.